So uh, this week was a little bit better. Um, I sold quite a few more things and I had a couple of more home runish. I shoot for an average of $25 for things that I sell. I just, because I work alone, I'm more into working smarter rather than the number of things I sell because I, it, it, it's competitive around here, especially for vintage things and things that I like to sell. So I try to be a little bit smarter about what it is that I buy. And so, uh, yeah, cause I don't want to waste my time. I don't, I don't have a ton of time to list. So I would not like listing, you know, five things for $10. I'm, j I'm just not that fast at listing. <laughs> it takes me a long time. I'm way too anal retentive and I'm just really too worried about making a mistake. So, uh, each listing probably takes me like 15, 20 minutes and it's, I know it's ridiculous and it's not, I know I need to just crank through the stuff, but I'd rather care about the things that I sell and try to get a higher profit for them and not sell as much, but have a higher rate of return than to sell a bunch of stuff for 10 bucks. That just, that if I have a whole week of $10 things, it just bums me out. Anyway, so this week I sold, um, first up was a lot of Disney picture books and a cool Mickey Mouse Club magazine. I got in a lot, um, in an auction. I, there was a bunch of books in there, a bunch of old Disney books from the eighties. And obviously that other magazine, I think that's probably from the sixties or fifties. Maybe it's from the seventies, eighties. I don't know. Anyway, maybe it was retro. Um, that went for 1999 and, uh, I figured it was about a dollar 50. Next up was a uh, U.S. Ski Team shirt lot. Uh, my son went through his drawer and picked out all the stuff that he didn't want or didn't fit anymore. They were size small. He's a six foot two skinny 15 year old. So um, these did not fit him at all anymore. I lotted them up, uh, sold them for eighteen eighty seven. They didn't cost me anything. Uh, they took five days to sell. Who knew? Uh, the Body Med heating pad that took forever, two years. Um, I got it from a neighbor when they moved out. I sold it for thirty five ninety nine. They paid shipping on that, so that didn't cost me anything. Um, and actually, let's see what they actually. Yeah, it was thirty five, thirty five ninety nine, and I paid shipping. Um, Next up was these uh, Disney, oh boy, that was a learning experience on that one. So I bought this big lot over the summer. I bought some Skylanders and some Disney Infinity, um, those little statues that go with the Wii. Well, these went these went with the Wii. They came with the Wii game. Anyway, they were $25 a box. I FaceTimed my son. I'm like, are these worth anything? He's looking it up and he's like, 25 bucks, just you know, offer her 35 for both boxes. She wouldn't take it. She was firm. I said, okay, forget it. I'll just do $50. Um, and I bought two boxes of all these figures. Well, they don't sell very well. They're not worth very much. They're, um, I think what my son was looking at, there was a Mickey Mouse that was um, a Fantasia Mickey Mouse with his wizard hat. And one of them is actually really worth a lot, but I think it's really rare. And of course the one that was in the box that I bought wasn't worth very much. If you can find it, it was worth like $150, but it, this one wasn't. So anyway, I've been, it says it's a pipeline. I sell them for 10 bucks a piece or something, but boy, am I never going to buy Skylanders? Cause those things, I think I lotted them up and I sold them for like 36. So I don't think I made any money on those at all. I just wanted them out of there. I was just mad at myself. They didn't take very long to sell, but I also didn't make any money on them. And these Disney ones, they're, they're not doing very well. So anyway, I sold all these little discs that go with them. I don't know if they make them do special things. I, I know nothing about these things. My son was not into them. Um, I sold it for $14.99. I figured uh, there was probably about 15, 20 of those figures in the box that I paid $25 for. So this probably worked out to about a dollar dollar two dollars maybe yeah probably like two dollars um and that took four months to sell uh that was a long story short um 
for a, a short story long. Anyway, moving on, Patagonia uh, pants that my son grew out of. I paid $17 for those at the outlet. Um, the, we have a Patagonia outlet that's about an hour and a half from my house. Um, and so I buy all my kids, a lot of my kids clothes there because they're not that into having new stuff. Sometimes I can slip stuff in to the girls' closets and, and my youngest doesn't care at all, but the older two are getting to be teenagers and they're like, really, it's used, you know, and it's a small enough town that someone might have owned it already and donated it. Anyway, so I buy all his stuff new. I buy it, I buy it at the Patagonia outlet. Um, I paid 17 I sold them for 35 74 They were on sale um, and I paid shipping on those. Next up was this, uh, it was about a five inch plate. It's a souvenir plate from Norway and the brand on it was Stavatsker Flint. I'm sure I just slaughtered that. And uh, anyway, I sold that. Oh, that went to the UK. Um, I sold it for $24.99. It went to England. Um, it was like this Oslo hotel commemorative plate um, and I paid a dollar for it in the thrift store. That took a while. That took 16 months. It's a long time. Um, next up was a cocktail. Oh, my whiny English shepherd. You can hear her moaning in the background. She's bored. <laughs> I guess, I guess it's a hint. I should speed it along. Huh, Lolly? Anyway, um, a uh, cocktail shaker. Love the barware. Love the vintage barware when I can find it. I don't ever buy the new stuff. Sometimes Pottery Barn, like if you can find the Penguin or the Airplane, those do pretty well. But um, really only if you can find vintage, then that's the only time I really pick them up. But I do love me some barware. $25 on that. Uh, I paid $0.50 cents for it at a garage sale. And that took... Ooh, I took a took a best offer on that. Um, I think I had it up for 50, which obviously was way too much because even when I took the half off, it was 14 months to sell, which is pretty long. I just see I'm sentimental and I'm, I'm attached to it because we all had bars in college when it wasn't cool. And, um, and I just, I always thought that would be a really cool thing. I don't have one now. Anyway, moving on. High tech girls shoes. They were my daughter, so they didn't cost me anything. I'm sure they were a hand me down from someone. Uh, Fifteen dollars on those, and they took they took a while. Ten months. I thought they would sell last summer, but they didn't. Um, Athleta pink running hoodie. Um, super cute. Probably overpaid on that, $4. I thought Athleta did better than it does. Eighteen ninety nine is what I sold it for. That took three months. Uh, ooh, this was gorgeous and huge. It was a um, giant black granny square uh, card or crochet bedspread. It was so cool. It was a really cool thing, but it was really hard to take a photograph of. I actually put it on, on my drying line that I have outside for in the summertime. We usually dry our clothes outside. So anyway, I hung it from there. Um, but you don't really get a good idea of how big it was. So anyway, I was asking a hundred. It was beautiful. It was perfect. Didn't have any flaws. Um, didn't have any stains. Somebody had put a lot of thought and energy into this thing. It was, I thought the color scheme was really amazing. Anyway, um, it took it, it's been up there for a while. So somebody, I had my store, um, a lot of my store on sale for 20% off and then it clicked off. And then someone like the next day after it, it went off sale, it was back at a hundred dollars and she offered me 80 and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't press accept fast enough because that though it was beautiful, though it was really cool. Um, that took two and a half years to sell. <laughs> I got it at an estate sale. I paid five bucks for it ages ago. Um, I probably will not pick up those things anymore, but it turned out to be my biggest sale of the week and they paid shipping. So that was even better. Next was an alabaster egg. It, um, it just came in a big auction lot and it, um, I sold that for 14 24. I think 25 cents is probably what I paid for it. it took six months to sell my parents had those so I was sort of sentimental about it um, obviously not a red hot seller 
Ooh, I love the next thing. Lupin Louie, Milton Bradley, plane flying uh, game. It's, I think it's from the 80s or 90s. It was super fun. The kids and I were playing it for hours, but it's just got this little plane that flies around and hits these little discs with chickens on them anyway. Super fun game. I sold that for 43 I think that must have been on sale. Let's see. Um... I sold it for thirty three twenty four, so yeah, I was on sale. I had my whole store on sale for five percent off, so thirty three twenty four. They paid shipping, so uh, I collected forty three forty three from them, and uh, that took that took six months to sell. I bought it at an estate sale for two bucks. But some of those old nineties um, moving games do really well. Um, so anyway, that one that one was fun. I I thought it would sell faster. And last, I sold a uh, Patagonia reversible fleece. I've had that up for a long time. That took 21 months to sell. I sold it for $30, so that was half off. Um, I was just trying to get it out of there because it had been up for a really long time, and sometimes you just got to cut, cut the cord. I know it's a really cool jacket, and I know it's probably worth more, but obviously this was the first offer I got on it. And it took 21 months to get that offer. So it's out of here. I paid $3 for it at a garage sale. And that's it for uh, the week of 20, the 20th through the 26th of March. Um, I collected $419, cost of goods $36.25. A lot of that is the $17 I um, included for my son's pants from the because but he wore them but he didn't wear them very long because he just shot up and they're 32 inch inseam or 31 inch I don't remember anyway and uh they he wore them maybe three months anyway so that was why it, that was so expensive I uh the cost to sell and ship everything for this week was 144.92 for a gross of 238.03. So the totals for my two weeks, which I have done for you in this screenshot, 707.49 is what I tell my husband I made in two weeks. Cost of goods, 47.60. Uh, cost of selling and shipping, 255.65 for a gross profit of 393.02. So not quite my 200 take home uh, a week, but close. If you average the two, we're getting there. I I know it's March. I know it's going to start to slow down. I know it's going to get worse. I'm starting to do merch on Amazon, and that actually is done pretty well. I don't have my numbers, but um, oh, I do. Uh, I've made 62, and then I sold something else last night. Uh, so maybe $65 so far this month. So you can tack that on. And then I've got some stuff up on Craigslist. So I'm wheeling and dealing, just trying to scavenge around and stay at home so that I can be with my kids, even though they're old. But, you know, I'm the mom that's around in the neighborhood. So if anybody else's kids get sick, they can come over and watch movies at my house or they can stay at their house now. They're all older, but they know that I'm in the neighborhood and that they can call me and they feel comfortable um, if they need anything, if I can, you know, bring them a lunch or something. So anyway, I, I like that privilege. I like owning my time. I don't mind that I don't make a ton of money, but quite honestly, around here, I probably would only make maybe... 10 15 dollars an hour but after taxes and everything and driving and being unavailable um to me it's just not worth it i just rather stay at home so uh with that being said here is my tip to uh help you think about your business and what you want to uh accomplish um when i'm out scavenging and looking for things around here uh, there's a lot of outdoor people and a lot of, like Alex Lowe used to live in the, before he died, um, tragically, he lived in, in the town up where I'm near. And so there are a lot of these old mountaineers and they have really cool old equipment that they just get rid of at garage sales or I find them at rummage sales and people overlook them and they don't want them because they look all ratty and nasty. So like, 
uh, internal frame backpacks and and uh, crampons, which are things that you put on your mountaineering boots so you can get on the ice, um, ice axes, all that kind of stuff. Um, old, you wouldn't even believe, like old ski boots, like those really old ones that would break your tib bib if you just fell just on a groomer and anyway those boots sell really well which is shocking to me but I think people use them in decor anyway I I'll, I'll show you uh, so for instance this this thing everybody is just passing it up I'm like oh, oh my gosh look at how cool that is it's Alpen light um, which is a vintage brand out of Ventura California in the 70s and um, it I'm sure it's going to sell great. It's probably worth 40 bucks. I paid less than a dollar for it. And people just pass it up because they don't think that it's going to be worth anything because it just looks old and nasty. But collectors want that stuff. So anyway, my tip is, after all of that, is to go out and think about where you live. So if you live in LA, you're probably looking for cute little workout clothes and swimsuits and stuff like that. When I lived in Arizona... Uh, lots of little kid clothes. I felt like there were a ton of kids and high end, like moms were, su I lived in Arizona for nine months. My husband was going to grad school and, uh, all I'd go to garage sales and there were so many high end boutique brand clothing. Now this was back in 2005. So things are, things, the economy was better back then, but, um, high end, <laughs> sorry, my dog's whining again, high end, um, clothing brands and boutique wear. And I sold a ton of that stuff. Um, and then, uh, so around here it's, it's mountaineering and skiing and outdoor stuff and vintage is, is better because people overlook it. Obviously the new stuff is great. I do pretty well with ski helmets because people don't value that stuff. Um, usually the kids outgrow it. I, I used to teach skiing and I know the kids outgrow. They show up for the first day of the season and, and they, they, they're in the wrong size helmet. So then they, mom and dad got to go run. Have, they have to go get them a new helmet and then they just donate the other one. Um, so it's not like the helmets have been crashed, especially in kid sizes. And they're expensive. They're a hundred bucks. So if you can sell them for 40, you're doing someone a favor. Um, so just think about where you live and what people like to do and what's popular in your area. And then go out and find it cheap and sell it high. Thanks for watching. We'll see you. Hopefully I won't go into town on Mondays anymore. And uh, we'll see you next week.